basics of input VAT. Input tax is the VAT component of the payment for goods and services supplied to the vendor for the purpose of making taxable supplies. For example, a vendor who purchases stationery to be used in the making of taxable supplies can claim the VAT part of the expense as input tax. This input tax can be deducted from the output tax in order to calculate the total VAT payable or refundable. Where goods or services are used partially for the purpose of making taxable supplies, only the portion of the input tax attributable to taxable supplies may be claimed as an input tax credit. Now this is only if the taxable use is less than 95%. Also remember that your taxable supplies refer to your standard rated as well as your zero rated supplies. However, if 95% or more of the purchased goods or services will be used in the making of taxable supplies, the full input tax credit may be claimed and no apportionment is necessary. This is the so-called de minimis rule. The de minimis is a Latin phrase that means something that's too small or insignificant to be important. And lastly, no input tax can be claimed on any exempt supplies because no output tax was paid. The claiming of an input tax deduction is not automatic as there are four aspects that need to be considered. The first one, is that all documentary requirements must be met. The first one being tax invoices. Now, tax invoices are the driving force behind the VAT system. No input tax may be claimed unless a vendor is in possession of a valid tax invoice. A registered vendor is obliged to issue a tax invoice only if the total consideration of the supply exceeds 50 rand. Where the supply exceeds 5,000 Rand, the following information must appear on a tax invoice and must be reflected in South African currency. The words tax invoice, VAT invoice or invoice, the name, address and VAT registration number of the supplier, the name, address and VAT registration number of the recipient, an individual serialized number and the date on which the tax invoice is issued, a full and proper description of the goods or services supplied, the quantity or volume of the goods or services supplied, as well as the amount of VAT being charged. Next one will be your debit and credit notes. The VAT Act also provides for the issue of a debit or a credit note if a supply is cancelled or the nature of the supply has changed or the consideration has been altered or the goods or services have been returned and a tax invoice was issued in relation to the original supply. Debit and credit notes could also be issued for the correction of incorrect tax invoices. Now, a debit note is if the amount of your VAT shown on the tax invoice is less than your actual VAT charged in respect of the supply, a debit note must be issued. A credit note, on the other hand, is if the amount of your VAT shown on the tax invoice is more than the actual VAT charged in respect of the supply, then a credit note must be issued. The next aspect, all the goods or services must be acquired wholly or partly for the making of taxable supplies. Claiming of an input tax deduction must not specifically be prohibited in terms of the VAT Act. And lastly, VAT at the rate of 15% must actually have been paid by the vendor who wants to claim the input tax deduction. If goods or services are purchased from a person who is not a registered vendor, no input tax can be claimed as no VAT has been paid on the goods or the services. The same principle applies if zero rated goods or services are purchased, for example, petrol and diesel. Since output VAT was levied at a rate of 0%, there is no input VAT that can be claimed. The only exception 
is the purchase of second-hand goods from non-vendors. In certain instances, the input tax is denied, even if the vendor paid input tax when the goods or services were acquired and is going to use the goods or services wholly for the making of taxable supplies. The input tax is denied on goods or services acquired to the extent that such goods or services are acquired for the purposes of entertainment. Now, entertainment, as defined in Section 1, includes the provision of food, beverages, accommodation, entertainment, amusement, recreation or hospitality of any kind. In respect of entertainment expenses, there are a few instances where the input tax will not be denied. This will be, for example, vendors that are in the business of supplying entertainment. The input tax deduction is denied in respect of any fees or subscriptions paid by the vendor for the membership of a club or association of a sporting, social or recreational nature, for example, the golf membership. Input tax is usually not denied in the case of the payment of professional memberships. However, there are instances where payments for professional memberships will be denied. Where the payment is for the professional membership of an employee, for example, the membership of the CASA accounting profession in South Africa, and the invoice is not issued in the name of the vendor, that input tax deduction could be denied. The input tax on the acquisition of a motor car is also denied. Now, a motor car, as defined in Section 1, includes a motor vehicle, station wagon, minibus, double cab light delivery vehicle, and any other motor vehicle of any kind normally used on public roads that has three or more wheels and is constructed or converted wholly or mainly for the carriage of passengers. The following will be excluding motor cars. Vehicles capable of transporting only one person or suitable for carrying more than 16 persons. Caravans, ambulances, vehicles constructed for a purpose other than the transport of persons, game viewing vehicles, and also vehicles constructed as or permanently converted into hearses. The denial of input tax will not apply in the case where the taxpayer is a car dealer or runs, for example, a car hire business at an economical rental. When second-hand goods are acquired from a resident of South Africa and that resident is either not a vendor or he or she is a vendor that uses the goods, the second-hand goods, solely for the making of exempt supplies and the goods are situated in South Africa, the VAT Act provides that deemed input tax may also be claimed. Deemed input tax is also known as notional input tax. The deemed input tax is calculated by the application of the tax fraction to the lesser of the purchase price or the open market value even though no VAT has actually been paid. Now remember, open market value is the consideration in money that the supply of goods and services will fetch if freely offered and made between persons who are not connected. Open market value also includes VAT where applicable in respect of taxable supplies. This deemed notional input VAT that may be claimed as input tax to the extent that payment has been made for the second-hand goods. If only a portion of the purchase price for the second-hand goods has been paid, only the same relative portion of the deemed input tax may then be claimed. We are now going to look at a few adjustments. In the case of goods or services acquired wholly or partially for making taxable supplies, that are then applied wholly for private, exempt or other non-taxable purposes, a taxable supply arises for which output tax must be levied. The output tax is equal to the tax fraction multiplied by the open market value. 
where a vendor has made an adjustment to output tax in circumstances where partial input tax was originally claimed, an additional input tax adjustment is provided for. The purpose of this adjustment is to allow a deduction of the unclaimed portion of the input tax. The adjustment is required to be made on the date on which the goods are supplied. For this purpose, the following formula is to be used. A times B times C. Where A is the tax fraction, B will then be the lesser of the adjusted cost, including that of the goods or services. B in formula A times B times C times D in section 18, the open market value on the date that a previous increase or decrease was calculated if the open market value was lower than the adjusted cost, or the open market value of the goods or services at the time the change of use adjustment is required. And C will then be the percentage used for non-taxable purposes for the period before the adjustment. In the case of goods or services acquired wholly for the purposes of making non-taxable supplies that are subsequently applied for making taxable supplies, an adjustment must be made to input tax. This input tax is calculated by applying the formula A times B times C times D, where A is again your tax fraction, B will be the lesser of your adjusted cost, including that, or the open market value of the goods or services at the time the change of use adjustment is required. C is your percentage by which the taxable use of goods or services has increased. And remember that an increase to 95% or more is deemed to be 100%. And D, if the goods are second-hand goods, the percentage of the consideration that has been paid. Now, this adjustment is required to be made in the tax period when the goods are applied for taxable purposes. Where capital goods are used for taxable purposes, the extent of the taxable use could change. The taxable use could increase or decrease. The value of the adjustment is calculated as follows. A times B times C, where A is again the tax fraction, B is the lesser of the adjusted cost, including that, or the open market value on the date that a previous increase or decrease was calculated, or the open market value of the goods or services at the time the change of use adjustment is required, and C is again the percentage by which the taxable use of goods or services has decreased or increased. Now in brackets, that, this is to say more than 10%. In the case of a change of use relating to a decrease in the extent of taxable use or application of capital goods or services, a deemed supply arises and the adjustment then results in output tax. In the case of a change of use relating to an increase in the extent of taxable use or application of capital goods or services, additional input tax credits may then be claimed. No adjustment needs to be made when the adjusted cost of such capital goods or services is less than 40,000 Rand. The increase or decrease is equal to or less than 10% or the input has been denied in terms of the VAT Act, for example, motor vehicles or entertainment assets. This adjustment is usually only made at the end of the year of assessment. However, if a vendor ceases, ceases to be a vendor prior to the end of the year of assessment, the adjustment will then be required immediately before that vendor ceases to be a vendor.